today. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm, I'm Dr. Freddie Hall, pastor of the Net Christian Center in Shiprock, New Mexico, largest Native American community in America, uh, on the largest Native American Indian reservation in America. I guess that's redundant. It's not Native American Indian. It's either Indian or Native American. <laughs> Um, uh, so anyway, you you know what I mean. Uh, but we're so blessed. We've been a pastor here for, we established a church here 23 years ago. And, uh, and God has blessed it. It's a very fruitful, successful ministry, if I do say so. But all the glory goes to God, though. So we're thankful. I'm coming to you today because we are on uh, our our terrible, terrible, terrible 57-hour lockdown, weekend lockdown uh, on the reservation. And the reason for that is my second point of my message today, fear. Fear. The, uh, and God, it's, it, it's a subtle attack uh, on, on the, uh, the church. The uh, outward expression of it, the, 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 the excuse for it, is, is the coronavirus. And the coronavirus is very serious. I had it. Uh, my son has it, has tested positive. I don't think he has the disease. Uh, my two grandsons have, are, have been tested positive. Uh, and I know the seriousness of the disease. But worse than the disease is the politics of it, and the, the, uh, fostered by the Democratic Party and the liberal establishment and the uh, the uh, the swamp, if you will. Uh, the uh, uh, which brings me to the second, the first point that I'm going to talk about today is deception. I'm going to talk about three spirits that have been unleashed on America and the world, but primarily on America. Uh, I'm focusing on America the, uh, because the, the forces of hell, hear me right, the forces of hell have been unleashed against America for one single purpose, to destroy the gospel, to destroy churches. We are the number one enemy uh, that, that the, uh, the liberal left media and academia uh, have, have, are focusing on because we stand for the holiness. We stand for, for the gospel, clean living, uh, family standards. And uh, the, 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 the left hates that, the, uh, the communism behind the left-leaning uh, philosophy. <coughs> so... But, but it's not only political, it's worse than political. It's a spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare that's been unleashed against the church. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm coming to you from my home study here in, here in Sheprock because of the lockdown. We can't have services in our, in our church building. We have a beautiful big church building with all the, uh, the conveniences and uh, but the the tribe won't let us have. They won't even let us have a parking lot service on Sunday morning, and uh, so we're we're doing the next best thing, and that is to have a. We've we've moved Sunday to Friday, <laughs> Sunday morning to Friday afternoon, uh, because here on the reservation we we go under a 57 hour lockdown, starting at I think it's eight o'clock. Friday night goes to about six o'clock Monday morning, which means that precludes us having even a parking lot drive-in service on Sunday. So we are doing that on Friday. The and there is a a week long total uh, curfew that goes into effect here on the reservation at eight. So we uh, we started Friday. It was nice. It, it surprisingly it wasn't that hot, and mosquitoes weren't out, and uh, we had a powerful service. Uh, so we're going to be doing that every Friday. If you want to join us, if you're within driving distance here in the Four Corners area, drive to Shiprock, or if you're in Shiprock, come on over to Dinette Christian Center and find you a parking place, and we got the big speakers up, and you can hear us. Uh, and so. Uh, 
we, we, we pre sing and preach and the gospel and pray for the sick and the whole thing. And we're doing it with social distancing. We're doing it with, with all the, uh, the rules. But let me just tell you, uh, I was talking about this as a spiritual warfare. And it, there's an attack. There's an attack right now against us. I mean, us believers and the Lord Jesus Christ. The uh, uh, I saw a pastor friend of mine posted a photo off of the news that he saw in one of the uh, peaceful marches. There's no such thing as a peaceful march anymore. There, there, there. And, uh, the BLM is is first cousins and partners and uh, with with the Antifa the violent group and there's there's no such thing as a peaceful protest anymore and so but let's talk about the church right here in, in our city Shiprock uh, there's a church just west of my house here about a, oh, a mile or so little Navajo church that we're having church the other day uh, even after President Trump uh, said that churches are classified now as essential services, meaning that we should be able to be having services. And across the nation, they are everywhere but here on the reservation. And the uh, But the Navajo police raided a service at this little church over the hill from me here, shut them down, and uh, shut down the service and told them they were forbidden to have services. I heard yesterday another church down on the farm road uh, did had the same thing. The police came in and and sh shut down the service. Uh, that that's that 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 that's violation of the First Amendment of the United States. And I know on the reservation we are a sovereign nation, but we still have a certain relationship with the U.S. government and the U.S. Constitution still applies here on the Navajo Indian Reservation. Uh, don't, don't think it doesn't. And, the, uh, uh, and they like that when, it, when it's convenient for them uh, to get money and to get uh, social services and, uh, and, and all of that. But let me, let me just tell you, the devil is out to shut down the church. And I'm going to talk about the reason for that from Matthew 24 today. The, uh, my heart is heavy today because I'm thinking about my friend, Pastor Bill Lee, who lives uh, just, he has another little assembly, God Church, just west of me here. Just, I mean, a stone's throw from the church that got shut down by the police. And, uh, and I know, I know uh, we have to obey the laws of the land, and we haven't violated, we haven't stood up uh, uh, as our church, we've done our best to comply and, uh, and, and, and obey the Navajo Nation laws uh, for all the good it's done us. But what we have, we've have, we've declined to have services and not not uh, stand up in rebellion against them. And so, uh, but Bill Lee and his wife, Pastor, uh, uh, lovely couple. She's Anglo. He's Navajo. Been married many years and. Uh, we, uh, some of their relatives are in, uh, in our congregation. Uh, but Pastor Bill and, and Virginia had a serious automobile accident the other day in the uh, Farmington area. I don't know the details of what happened, but I do know that they were both life flighted from uh, San Juan Regional Hospital in Farmington to a uh, hospital in Albuquerque, uh, where they've both been in critical condition. She had one surgery on her leg, and I understand she's going to have to have another surgery on her leg. Pastor Bill has been in ICU because he's having heart issues, and they can't get his heart regulated right, and so they have him in ICU watching him. This is a tough time. This is a ministry couple, a pastor couple, uh, dear, dear people, servants of God. So let me just encourage you to just pray for them. But that's the kind of, I mentioned these three cases to you because it's typical of the demonic attack against the church. And uh, we're not whiners, we're not complainers, we're not victims. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. And uh, so we will win, we are winning, and we, we will win. Uh, um, 
in the name of Jesus. But I want you to just to uh, uh, focus with me. Uh, turn over to the book of, of Matthew chapter 24. This is a great uh, prophetic uh, chapter of the New Testament. Where Paul talks, or Jesus himself talks about a number of things. Uh, answering the question, what's the sign of your coming? When will it happen? Uh, Jesus never addressed the when question, but he talks about signs that tell us when. Uh, that it is coming, uh, and there's some things that are, are, are written, but I'm not going to read the entire uh, context. You, you have a Bible there, but I was just going to point out three words to you. In Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus said, watch out that no one deceives you. That is the number one thing that Jesus used to answer when, he t when they asked, what's the sign of your coming? And the, 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 Jesus' short answer is deception. There's a spirit. This is the number one spirit that I'm telling you as a, as a prophet of God. I've been in the, this ministry for over 50 years. And I can't tell you how many thousands of messages. And I've predicted some things that, that people thought I'd lost my mind even before I was old. Now, they thought I was a young crazy man. Now, they think I'm an old crazy man. But let me tell you something. The, the, it's a word from the Lord, and you can write this down. The number one spirit that Jesus warned us about, and I'm here to tell you, has, has been unleashed on the world today as a spirit of deception. Do not believe anything. Do not believe. Because a spirit of death, don't, don't believe it in the news. Don't believe it in the church. Don't believe it on television, religious programs. And, and I, I'm getting, I'm flooded with uh, Facebook and, and other media messages from pastors just telling me, oh, we've got to support Black Lives Matter. Well, God loves black people. And we, you know, you, some of you, uh, uh, black skinned people are members of this congregation and you love me and I love you and we all love God. Skin color has not a thing to do with our relationship with God and it shouldn't have anything to do with our relationship with each other. Uh, but the this very idea that black lives matter is an affront to every other color there is. You're leaving Native Americans out. But I'm here to tell you, Navajo lives matter. Apache lives matter. Uh, Crow lives matter. I've been on all these reservations. The Sioux, Sioux lives matter. Hispanic lives matter. Oriental lives matter. And we have all these in our congregation right here. We have, uh, we have Hispanic. We have black. We have Asian, we have a lovely Filipino couple uh, that are just wonderful people, and so, and and active in the church. So, so race is not a part of the uh, of the kingdom of God. Racism is not a fruit of the spirit. It, it is hatred. It's spawned in hatred, but it's being fueled today by deception. Dece there's re uh, religious and political deception. There's medical deception. Let me just give you one example, and I'm going to weigh out on a limb here, and I, I hope you'll uh, hear me out. I began to have a, at the early on, back in March, on um, this COVID virus thing, I began to get a gut feeling. That's how I know the Spirit of God is turning inside of me, trying to... Uh, reveal something to me because I just begin to have a gross uh, mistrust and and uh, and uh, uh, uneasiness with a lot of the uh, the the COVID virus warnings that was coming. I was listening to to the president's uh, COVID virus uh, team that was coming on every day, and I'd hear this guy Fauci, Doctor Fauci. I call him Phony Fauci. Uh, but he was telling us that by now 2.2 million of us would be dead by today. We're not. Uh, the, uh, we haven't even hit one-tenth of that. Uh, uh, but it, the purpose of it was deception, deception to scare you, 
to scare you. And one of the things that they use to shut down this nation, the economy of the United States of America, the strongest economy in the world was shut down in just like that with one misinformation. And that was this uh, asymptomatic contagious uh, thing that you can be contagious when you don't have a fever and, or any other symptoms. I just didn't believe it. I had something in my spirit just would not let me believe that. So I, I went on to do some research online and I, I just Googled asymptomatic symptom contagion. And I, and I just simple question, where's the scientific evidence for that? You know what? I was all over the internet and really I found one, one article that came up and it was a article written uh, from a, a, a post in the an article in the New England New England Journal of Medicine, which addressed that very thing. Their story was this: that when when the the Chinese virus broke loose in Wuhan, China, and they were putting out all kinds of misinformation. We know that's being confirmed now because there's a one the one of their scientists, a doctor. Uh, had to escape China just this week, and she's here in the United States, and she's telling you, telling us about the misinformation that came out of Wu. First thing they said, you can't catch it from another human. Next thing they said, it come from a bat. All that was wrong. That was misinformation, and the, the, and they propagated this to shut down the economies of the world so the Chinese could gain a economic advantage. That's it. Economic and political advantage. It was chemical, biological warfare. And we fell for it. And our government fell for it. The uh, Thank goodness that President Trump caught it uh, a little late, but he caught on to it. He's doing everything in his power to, to come against it. But let me just tell you something. This article that I read from the New England Journal of Medicine said that the Chinese lab in Wuhan, the, the, in Wuhan, China, sent a woman uh, uh, that was infected. They believed she was infected. They deliberately sent her to Germany, where she, uh, where she, in, uh, people caught the virus over there, and and then it spread to other countries, and she went to Italy, and you know that. President Trump shut down, shut down travel from China to the United States early on. I believe it was back as far as February, and then he, uh, he uh, then, but the the virus never came to us from China. It came to us from Europe, and the uh, then later he had to shut down travel from Europe uh, to try to better. But it was the, the you know the cat was already out of the bag by then. The uh, but. The Chinese said because people that she interacted with in Europe, the uh, the the interacted with you in Europe that they uh, and caught they caught the disease. She just turned around and went straight back to China, and they said uh, because people caught it from her, it's asymptomatic uh, person infected all those Europeans. Soon as she got back to China. She started having all the classic COVID virus uh, symptoms. But the news media picked that up because the Chinese said that asymptomatic people are contagious. They began to blow it up. Nobody questioned it. Nobody tested it. Nobody uh, uh did a research on it. The, the news media, the networks picked it up and, 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 and broadcast it to the world. That's the excuse that phony Fauci uh, uh, and, and the liberal left, the liberal media, the liberal academia used to shut down our schools, shut down our businesses, shut down our, our jobs, shut down our whole economy on one lie. I know some of you look at me like I lost my mind, but I'm telling you, I've thought this through and I've decided to speak out. The spirit of deception. 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 The second spirit that Jesus warned about 
was a spirit of fear. And look what he said. He said, he said at, at that, he said, because of the, uh, he says, see to it. Uh, let me quit stuttering and get this right here. <laughs> Jesus said, watch out that you don't be deceived. And he talked about a couple of other things. And in verse 6, he said, you will hear wars and rumors of wars, because we're hearing that. But here he talks about how our controlled response should be to this bad news. He said, see to it that you are not alarmed. See to it that you're not alarmed. In other words, don't allow fear to control you. Do You see to it. It's up to you. I cannot control your fear. I'm your pastor. I can give you the word of God. Even God won't control your fear. He said you control your fear. Get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of your heart. Get a hold of your emotions. Get a hold of, and get, stay focused in the word of God. Jesus said, see that you are not alarmed. It's up to you. Because that spirit of fear has been unleashed on America. That spirit of fear, based on the misinformation that uh, phony Fauci and, and uh, the, the, the coronavirus team, and, and I, I, I love Vice President Pence, and I love President Trump, but I'm telling you, they got taken in at first. And, and, but the damage was done. And fear gripped our nation. Fear gripped the Navajo nation. I'm telling you, we're four months into this and fear is still running rampant on our reservation. Good Lord Almighty. God has not given us, 1 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Get your ever-loving mind back. Think God thoughts. Think biblical thoughts. Get your get get your head out of the news and into the word. Because that's when faith's going to come. You're not going to get any faith off of CNN. You're not going to get any faith and build you up on NBC. You're not going to get your faith built up watching the the world and all the the entertainment and the community the comedy shows that mock God mock. President Trump, mock our country, mock our Constitution, mark our, mock our amendment. The First Amendment is that freedom, government will not establish uh, any religion, and they, they cannot control us. We have freedom of religion. It's the same amendment to give the marchers right to protest. If you do away with the First Amendment, you do away with the right to protest and march and, and peaceably assemble. It's all in the same commandment or uh, commandment amendment then third I want to talk to you real quickly about the third the third spirit first is deception second is fear and the third one I want to talk to you about is discouragement look at verse 10 at that time and he's talking about many of you will be handed over and per persecuted. And that's why I've been talking about the beginnings of persecution against the church here. But it's going to get worse because he says we will be put to death, many of us. As, as already happens in many countries of the world today to Christians. And you will be hated. Let me tell you something. We are hated. We are hated. Jesus is hated and you and I are hated because, by the way, our church got burglarized. Some somebody it was a week ago yesterday. Uh, some nobody was there. They knocked the front doors in, the double doors went in and started he helping themselves to our sound system equipment and computers. And but their main target was my office. Did the same uh, things like taking my photograph and turning it upside down on the floor. That, that was saying to me a message, Pastor, we don't like you and we don't like what you do. We hate you. And that's just one of the little signs they left me in my office. We are hated. <clears throat> we accept that. But you know what? As bad as the hatred of the world can get against you, the love of God is greater than hate. 
love will always override supersede and take precedence over hate but he said at that time they're, they're going to betray you and they'll be betray. but at that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other discouragement i was on a zoom call with a group of pastors this week and one of our leading ministers said to uh, to, to the group I have to battle discouragement. It's discouraging pasting in this time. Our attendance is it, back there. They, they can have service in their church, but they still have to social distance and, and all that. We can't even get in our church. The uh, But let me just tell you something. Discouragement. That's why. What's going to happen? That's the whole purpose of the deception. It's the whole purpose of the fear. So you will be discouraged. Because at that time, many will turn away from the faith. Many will turn away from the faith. Discouragement. Let me just tell you, encourage yourself. First Peter, uh, or Jude 20 rather. Jude 20 tells you how to get encouraged without being in active services. You need the, the service, and we're started, we started... A, well, our Sunday on Friday parking lot service to have uh, a service of some kind and it was well attended and good response. And we're going to do it this Friday at 6 o'clock every Friday till this 57 hour nonsense is over with. The, uh, but how do, how do you deal with discouragement? Let me give you what the Word of God says. Jude 20. Build yourself up. Did you hear that? Build yourself up up build yourself up we're at a time where you can't always depend on the church being open we're living on a time where you can't <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me you we're living in a day where it, more and more it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one, mano a mano relationship you and god you and god Jude says, build yourself up, praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Take some time out. You can do more minutes praying in tongues, five minutes, and everything else all week. Pray in tongues. Paul said, when we pray in tongues, we edify ourselves. If you want to be edified, edified means be encouraged. If you're discouraged, you need to be encouraged. Well, I want to encourage you in the Lord. Amen. That's my word today. Three spirits that you have authority over. The spirit of, 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 of misinformation or deception. The spirit of fear and the spirit of discouragement. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over spirits of misinformation. The lying spirits. Lying spirits that have been sent out to deceive us. In the name of Jesus, give us the knowledge and the courage and the wisdom to stand up against everything. Question everything. Father, thank you that God has not given us a spirit of fear. We, that's how we know it's a spirit, a spirit of fear. God has not given us one. If it's not from God, it's from the devil. So, Father, we, we thank you. We have authority. I, I come against all spirits of, of fear that have gripped the hearts and minds and souls of, of the church and the nation. In the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit of fear. And I bind discouragement. Lord, I just release a spirit of, of, of encouragement over every believer that's watching me today. Every pastor, every evangelist, every Sunday school teacher, every children's church worker. It's discouraging not being able to, to exercise your calling. But Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. If that spoke to you, I wish you'd get a hold of me and, and uh, go to... Uh, DineCC.org, D I N E H C C, that's the name of our church, Dine Christian Center.org. Go there, this is offering time. Go down there, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a PayPal donation button down there. And leave your offering there with us today. Support this ministry, and God will bless you for it. God love you, I love you. I'll see you Friday on the parking lot of Dine Christian Center, 7777. 
7777 Highway 491 Shiprock, just north of the Sinclair Station. God bless you. You have a great day.